Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Chewy Core Box Pro. Now this is an awesome little mini PC that I've been looking forward to getting my hands on. And straight out of the box, the specs might not impress everybody, but this does have one major thing going for it as many PCs go, and that's a Thunderbolt 3 port, so we can add an external GPU to this unit. Other than that, it's powered by a 10th gen i3, we got 12 gigs of RAM, and it's all sitting inside of this nice looking enclosure here. Now it's plastic and aluminum, I was really hoping that this was all aluminum, but the front bezels and the handle looking things are actually made out of plastic. So yeah, it's definitely a mini PC. It's 6 inches by 6 inches. It does have an M.2 SSD out of the box, but we can also add a 2.5 inch SSD or mechanical drive to this unit. And it comes preloaded with a Wi-Fi 6 module. So other than the Core Box Pro that we're going to get in the package, we're also going to receive a few accessories. First up, we have this SATA adapter. Like I mentioned, we can add a 2.5 inch drive inside of this unit. We have some mounting hardware for that drive and the power supply itself. It's a lot smaller than I thought it would be, and it's a 65 watt power supply. I was kind of hoping this would plug directly into the wall, but it does have that extension cable that comes off the side. Now, you're also going to get a little warranty pack here and some more information about the Core Box Pro, but that's about it for the unboxing. So yeah, I really do love the design of this little thing. We have plenty of ventilation. It can sit on its side, or you can stand it up vertically like a mini desktop tower PC. So taking a look around the unit, on the left hand side and the right hand side, all we have is ventilation, there's no extra ports here, everything happens on the back of this unit. And as you can see, it actually has a pretty decent I.O. selection for a mini PC. We have dual gigabit ethernet, our audio inputs and outputs, four USB 3.0 ports, full size HDMI, full size display port, our Thunderbolt port, and power in. For the specs on the Core Box Pro, the CPU is a 10th Gen i3. It's a dual core CPU, base clock of 1.2 GHz, boost up to 3.4. For the GPU, we have built in Intel UHD graphics, but like I mentioned, this does have that Thunderbolt 3 port, and we can add an external GPU quite easily to this unit. 12 gigs of non user replaceable LP DDR4 soldered to the board, running at 3733 MHz. I actually had to triple check this just to make sure it was really running at those speeds, and sure enough, it definitely is. A pre installed 256 GB M.2 SSD, plus we have room for a 2.5 inch SSD or mechanical drive up to 2 TB, 802.11 AX Wi Fi, so we do have Wi Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.1, and it's running Windows 10 Home 64 bit right out of the box. So before I jump into some testing, I did want to pull the top off of this thing and just take a look. As you can see, you can easily mount that 2.5 inch drive here and use the included cable. The M.2 SSD that comes pre-installed is made by Kingston, and I was really surprised to see this CPU heatsink here. It's actually pretty big for this little mobile chip. And I have tested this same CPU on my channel in a $300 laptop, and even with the smaller heatsink, we didn't thermal throttle at all, so I guarantee we could run this thing at full boat all day long. Alright, so before I attach an external GPU to the Core Box Pro, I just wanted to see how this performs straight out of the box, and for most people, this would work out as their main desktop PC. It's actually pretty snappy. We have that 10th Gen i3, dual core, 4 threads, boost up to 3.4 GHz on both cores, 12 gigs of LP DDR4 RAM running at 3733 MHz, and the built-in 10th Gen UHD graphics. Now, like I said, for most people using this as their main desktop PC, they'll definitely be able to get by. Everything you need to do can be done on a little box like this. We're going to go ahead and check out some web browsing real quick. We'll head over to Chewy's website. And as you can see, I mean, everything loads up really quick. Here's the Core Box X, and I believe this one has the i5. It's got an i7 in it. But yeah, we'll go back over to laptops, web browsing, super snappy, especially with that AX Wi-Fi built in. And as for 4K video playback, it actually does a really good job. Pause this. We're going to pull up stats for nerds. Make sure we're set to 4K, full screen. One drop frame on the initial load in, but we're at 4K and it's working great. Now this video itself is actually a 5K video, so we'll go to 5K, 60 FPS, give it a second to buffer in, and there we have it. No drop frames there. 
and it'll play all the way through just fine. Same thing goes for Plex, 4K video playback, Netflix, HBO, Amazon Prime, Hulu, and so on and so on. So for what most people do with their desktop PCs, this is going to work out just great. Now I want to move over to a little bit of gaming performance using the built-in 10th gen UHD Intel graphics. We're going to see how that performs, then I want to connect an external GPU to this unit and just see what kind of a performance boost we can get out of it, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be a very significant performance boost. Alright, so first up we have CSGO, and keep in mind we're using the built-in Intel UHD graphics. I was actually pretty impressed with the performance here. We're at 1080p, low settings, I figured I would have had to drop it down a lot more to get this kind of frame rate, and we're not at a constant 60, but it's really, really close. Taking it up a little bit to Forza Horizon 4, 1080p, very low settings, we're getting around 20 FPS. I thought we would actually get less than this. It's definitely not playable at 1080p, and even if I drop it down to 720, we can't even hit 30 with it. And finally here, for the UHD graphics, we have Rocket League. I'm set up as low as we can go at 1080p, and I was actually getting an average of 52 FPS. So yeah, there are some lower end games that will be fully playable on the Core Box Pro without an external GPU. We didn't get great performance in Horizon 4, and I didn't expect to, but I actually got better performance with CSGO and Rocket League than I ever thought that this little Core Box would put out without an external GPU. So I was lucky enough to get my hands on a brand new Galax RTX 3060 Ti. I will have a full review of this card coming up very soon on a more beefy build, but since I had it in my possession, I figured we'd test it externally with the Core Box Pro. So I just need to drop it inside of this Sonnet Thunderbolt 3 external GPU enclosure, and this has a 350 watt power supply, it should be plenty for this RTX 3060. So as you can see, I have the Galax RTX 3060 Ti installed in this sauna enclosure. And when this is all connected, in order to use this external GPU, I will have to run my HDMI out from this Galax card to my monitor. So I'm going to go ahead and boot this up, then I need to get my NVIDIA drivers installed and see if this even works. I haven't tested these new 30 series RTX cards as an external GPU, but I'm sure it's going to work here. So we'll boot this up. And we have made connection over Thunderbolt 3 from the Core Box Pro to the Sauna enclosure. All I need to do now is move back over to Windows. I'm going to install some NVIDIA drivers, and then we'll run some tests with this. Alright, so the NVIDIA driver installation went off without a hitch. As you can see down here, we have my little Thunderbolt connection, RTX 3060 Ti. We have 8 gigs of GDDR6, and it is showing up in my task manager. So now, what I want to do is run a few GPU benchmarks. We're going to do a little bit of comparison between this 3060 Ti and the built-in UHD graphics, and then we're going to move back to those three games we tested with the built-in GPU and test them with this Galax 3060 Ti. So first up, we have Firestrike. This is with the built-in UHD graphics. Total score, 1398. It's definitely a lower score, but as soon as I plugged in this external enclosure with the RTX, 3060 Ti, we scored a 12,052, and that's a significant jump in GPU performance, and I expected this because we're adding a pretty beefy GPU to this little setup. Also did the same thing with TimeSpy, and with the built-in Intel graphics, we got a total score of 454, but with the 3060 Ti connected over Thunderbolt 3 working as an external GPU, we upped the score by quite a bit, going from 454 all the way up to 6,666. So when it comes to GPU performance on the Core Box Pro with this external GPU, we will see a significant gain. But keep in mind, we are connected over Thunderbolt 3, so this GPU isn't going to be working at its max capacity, and we're still working with that i3 CPU. So if the game is very CPU dependent, we still might struggle with some games. It has nothing to do with this 3060 Ti. I mean, this thing will basically run anything at 1080p ultra settings. When it comes to gaming, we're introducing two bottlenecks here the Thunderbolt 3 connection, and the i3 CPU. But I still went through and tested some. Here we have CSGO, 1080p, very high settings, with that RTX 3060 Ti working over Thunderbolt 3, and we're getting an average of around 90 FPS here. 
If we had a better CPU, we would see much better performance out of this GPU here, even over Thunderbolt 3, but this game is being limited by the i3 in the Core Box Pro. Either way you look at it, we did get a big jump in performance versus the built-in Intel graphics. Next up, Forza Horizon. If you remember with the built-in UHD graphics, I was at very low settings, 1080p, and I was getting an average of around 21 FPS. I was able to bump it up to very high, and we're getting an average of 80 FPS here. And finally, Rocket League, maxed out at 1080p with the 3060 Ti, we're getting an average of 240 FPS. Now remember, with the Intel UHD graphics, I had to set this to low, and we were getting around 54 FPS out of it. So taking a look at power consumption from the wall, it's really great when you don't have an external GPU connected. At idle, 9.1 watts, 4K video playback, 13.2, gaming average around 27.6, and the maximum that I could get this thing to pull from the wall was 38.5 watts. But once you connect an external GPU, you really gotta measure the external GPU's power consumption and the PC's power consumption at the same time to get accurate readings. So once I connected the RTX 3060 Ti, we jumped up at idle to 31.7 watts, 4K video playback, 45.7, Gaming on average 138.2 watts, and the maximum that I could get this to pull with the external GPU connected was 174 watts from the wall. When it comes to CPU temps of the Core Box Pro, the CPU cooler that they've added really does a great job with this i3 CPU because at idle we're at 38 degrees Celsius, gaming on average 65. The maximum that I saw the CPU go to was 74 degrees Celsius, and I'm going to tell you right now through all of my testing. My ear was about four feet away from this PC and I could not hear the fan. I mean, it is a very, very silent unit. Now, when you connect an external GPU to it, you're going to hear that GPU spin up. But when it comes to just the box itself and the built-in CPU fan, it's almost silent. So in the end, I really do like the Core Box Pro. Even out of the box without an external GPU, I think it's a pretty decent performer. It's a great little mini PC. It's definitely small enough. We have enough RAM. And like you saw, you could use this as your everyday desktop. But when it's time to game, you can connect an external GPU. And we were definitely bottlenecking that 3060 Ti. So I would recommend something like a 1650 or even a 1660 on this thing. And you're still going to get a big boost in performance. But if you really want a gaming machine, just take that money and build something for gaming. I look at this as kind of a novelty because what you got to do is you got to buy the Core Box Pro, which I think is around $320. Then you got to buy a GPU and an external Thunderbolt 3 enclosure. And with all that added together, the price is definitely going to get up there. So I would rather take that money and just build a mid-tower PC with a decent GPU. And in the end, I will get better gaming performance out of something like that. But if you're in the market for a small form factor or a mini PC, I do think this is something you should definitely look at. Now, I really do want to test some more gaming on this machine with and without an external GPU. I know this video is kind of dragged out a lot, but this was my first test with the unit itself, and everything worked out pretty decently. So if you have a list of games that you want to see running, I will make another video on the Core Box Pro, either with or without the GPU. Just let me know what games you want to see running on this unit in the comments below, and I can come up with another video. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about the Chewy Core Box Pro, I will leave a link in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.